This conference will now be recorded. Okay. So you know the paranasal about the paranasal air silent. It is the air containing bony spaces around the nasal cavity. You can see these are the paranasal air silent around the nasal cavity. And it is you know that it is lined by mucous membrane, which is made up of pseudostratified cilia with columnar epithelium. Okay, so this is present in and around the nasal cavity and around the orbit. Okay, so their location is mainly around the orbit and the nasal cavity. So their sinuses are here arranged in pass. Okay, there are four types of sinuses are present uh, based on the location of the bone where it is located. Okay, so we are going to see under this heading of first one introduction, then types, location, function, description of each type, and applied anatomy. Okay, so introduction part I already told. Okay, so it is located in and around the orbit and the nasal cavity. Okay, there are four types of sinuses. They are on pad. Okay, frontal air sinus, which is located in the frontal bone. Ethmoidal air sinuses, which is located in the ethmoidal bone. And sphenoidal air sinuses, which is located in the sphenoidal bone body of the sphenoid. And maxillary air sinus located in the maxilla. Okay, so all are bad, but this ethmoidal air sinus, if you take, so actually here almost um, some 3 to 18 ethmoidal uh, air cells are present. So they are grouped into three groups anterior, middle, and posterior groups. Okay, so others they are arranged um, uh, singly only. Okay. And uh, if you see the location uh, in and around, this is the nasal septum, you can see the nasal cavity, okay? So on either side of nasal cavity, you can see the ethmoidal air sinus and maxillary sinus. Okay, that is below and lateral to nasal cavity, you can see the maxillary sinus. If you see uh, in relation to orbit, okay? So medial to orbit, you have ethmoidal air sinus. Inferior to orbit will be the maxillary air sinus. Superior to orbit is the frontal air sinus. And uh, superior and um, supramedially, you can see the spinal air sinus on the floor of the middle cranial person. Okay. So if you see the functions of the um, paranasal air sinus, the main function here is it makes the skull lighter. Okay. And it also adds resonance to the voice. And it acts as an air conditioning chamber by adding humidity and temperature to the inspired air. Okay. And it also helps in the growth of the facial skeleton after birth. Okay. So if you see uh, during this patient, mainly at the expiration, so the sinuses are filled with air. But this uh, during inspiration, this air which is humidified and warmed inside the sinus will be released during inspiration okay so air will be let out during inspiration and it is stored during expiration okay so this is the important function of the paranasal air sinuses if you see the development of the paranasal air sinuses usually they all develop as mucus diverticula of, of the nasal cavity and it invade the neighboring bones um, around the nasal cavity okay so all the sinuses are present at birth except frontal air sinus okay so which is the one which uh, develops two to three years after birth okay so this is about the development next we will see the each type of uh, each sinuses individually so all the sinuses you should read in this heading only so you memorize this heading and you change the uh, wordings for each sinus okay so first we'll see the frontal sinus okay so you can see the um, red color thing in the frontal bone this is the frontal uh, sinus so this frontal sinus are part sinus they are located in the frontal bone that is between the two tables of the squamous part of the frontal bone if you see the shape of the frontal sinus it is triangular in shape so the shape is triangular okay and it usually separated by a septum the each sinus on either side it is separated by a septum okay if you see the next setting extension okay so it 
uh, extends uh, below uh, to the orbit roof of the orbit above it extends um, just above the superciliary arch you can see it is almost exactly located behind the medial end of the superciliary arch so above it extends beyond the superciliary arch into the frontal bone and below it extends into the roof of the orbit so this is the exact um, extension of the frontal air sinus okay if you see the dimension or measurement of the um, frontal air sinus it is about uh, if you see it is almost um, 3.5 cm in diameter in length breadth and and also width okay so you can even take this as uh, 3 average 3 or 3.5 cm it differs in each group okay and if you see the communication the frontal air sinus you know it opens into the anterior end of the hiatus semilunaris in the middle meatus of the lateral wall of nox okay so as i already said this frontal air sinus develops as a mucus diverticulum from the um, uh, nasal cavity which extends into the frontal bone actually this frontal sinus it develops Two to three months after birth only. Okay, and um, if you see the boundaries of the frontal air sinus, it actually it extends above. Um, um, it is limited above by the roof of the orbit and even below by the orbit only. So medially it will be separated by a septa. Okay, and if you see the innervation, I think you know about the. Um, now supply and blood supply of the scalp here so here you will get the supra orbital nerve so that is the nerve which supplies the frontal air sinus okay and the artery here is the supra orbital artery which supplies the frontal air sinus so the lymphatic drainage will go into the submandibular lymph node you know the drainage of the lymphatic drainage of the force face so the entire area here actually drains into the submandibular lymph node okay so if you see the applied anatomy part actually the sinus it is inflammation of the frontal air sinus is one of the commonest clinical condition this condition is called frontal sinusitis okay so i will take detailly about the applied anatomy at the end i think now you are clear about the frontal sinus if you see the location is located in the frontal bone between the two tables of the frontal bone it is triangular in shape so it extends above up to the um, superciliary arch below it extends up, up to the roof of the orbit okay and if you see the measurement so average uh, the extension the vertical and transverse and anteroposterior diameter will be 3 to 3.5 cm and it uh, the frontal air sinus it opens into the Middle meatus of the nose. Okay, and the innervation and blood supply will be supraorbital nerve and the supraorbital artery. I think now you are clear about the frontal air sinus. Okay, now you can see the sagittal section of the um, bone here. Okay, and you can see the shape, the triangular shape of the frontal air sinus. You can see it extending up to the um, roof of the orbit here. okay and you can see the radiographic view of the frontal air sinus on both sides separated by a septum here okay and you can um next we'll go on to the next sinus spinoidal air sinus okay so the spinoidal air sinus is a paired paranasal sinus which is located in the spinoid bone so the location of the spinoidal air sinus is in the spinoidal bone okay so this is mainly located within the body of the spinoid it lies above and behind the nasal cavity okay and if you see the shape of the spinoidal sinus it is not equal in size so both the sinuses are asymmetrical and if you see the measurement it is the average is 2 cm vertical anteroposterior and transverse diameter will be 2 cm so the transverse diameter will be little less than 2 1.5 cm but you can crossly remember it is 2 cm otherwise it is difficult to remember all the dimensions okay and if you see the extension of the um 
spinodal uh, sinus you can see it extend up to the uh, anterior margin of the foramen magnum in the previous picture you can see so this will lead on to the foramen magnum this is the clivus okay this part is a clivus this is basic spinoid and basic axis so the spinodal sinus it extends up to the anterior margin of the foramen magnum so anteriorly it may encroach on the roof of the orbit here so laterally if you see the extension it extends up to the pterygoid canal here okay now if you see the relations of the spinodal r sinus okay so this is this diagram i think you are familiar already seen in the cavernous sinus this is the cavernous sinus this is the pituitary gland optic chiasma optic nerve optic tract and you can see the internal carotid artery with abducens now this is the later wall of the cavernous sinus where third fourth and maxillary and mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve is located here okay and if you see the spinodal ar sinus it is located within the body of the spinoid here so it is above if you see it is related with the pituitary gland and the optic chiasma okay so below in this diagram see it is related to the roof of the nasopharynx okay on each side if you see it is related to the cavernous sinus with the internal carotid artery okay and behind it is related to the pons and medulla oblongata okay so which is separated here by the basilar venous plexus okay and in front it opens communicates with the spinoethmoidal recess and it opens into the superior um, that is supreme meatus of the lateral wall of the nose that is a space above the superior meatus i think now you are clear with the relations once again i am repeating if you see the extension of the spinoidal sinus anteriorly it may extend uh, into the roof of the orbit here posteriorly extend up to the anterior margin of the foramen magnum laterally the extension will be on either side to the pterygoid canal in this radiographic view you can see the spinal lar sinus here okay and if you see the relations above it is related to pituitary gland and optic chiasma in this diagram also you can see okay and below will be your roof of the nasopharynx okay on each side it is related to cavernous sinus with the internal carotid artery behind will be your pons and the medulla oblongata okay and in front will be your spinoethmoidal recess okay through spinoethmoidal recess it communicates and opens above the space above the superior meatus of the nose okay here if you see the blood supply of spinoidal sinus it is supplied by posteroethmoidal artery okay posteroethmoidal artery and the nerve supply the same posteroethmoidal nerve and some branches from the pterygopalatine ganglia okay and the lymphatic drainage will be into the retropharyngeal nerve whatever sinus which is present anterior it will go to submandibular lymph node and which is present posterior will go to the retropharyngeal lymph node okay so this you have to keep always in mind okay so next sinus we are going to see about is the ethmoidal sinuses okay so ethmoidal sinuses if you see the location it is located within the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone this is the ethmoid bone very fragile bone okay you can see the nasal septum that is formed by perpendicular plate of ethmoid here so this is the labyrinth of the ethmoid you can see numerous air filled cavities these are the ethmoidal air cells the green colored here okay these are the ethmoidal air cells so they are 3 to 8 um, sinuses will be present on each side it may be um, three will be larger in size and 18 smaller sinuses will be there okay so if you see the location i said it located within the uh, labyrinth of the ethmoid bone okay so this labyrinth is closed uh, by the frontal lacrimal bone maxilla and spinoid bone but if you see this is the coronal section of the head and neck specimen you can see the orbit here this is the nasal cavity this is the nasal septum here this is the lateral wall of the nose okay you can see the ethmoidal air sinus is on either side so it is located between the bony orbit medial wall of the bony orbit and lateral wall of the nose 
within the labyrinth of ethamoral. So this is the exact location of the ethamoral R sinus. So here the dimensions are not there because um, it's all small, small packet of sinuses. I said it is all, they are arranged in three groups, anterior group, middle and posterior group. Anterior, some three to seven sinuses will be there, which open into the uh, hiatus, anterior end of the hiatus seminaris through ethamoral infundibulum. Okay, and um, you can see here, these are the groups of ethamoral um, air cells. So the anterior will open through ethamoral infundibulum into the anterior end of hiatus semilunaris. And middle, it forms an elevation here, that is the middle ethamoral bulla. Okay, so the posterior sinus will open into the superior meatus of the nose. Okay. I think now you're clear about the ethamodal R sinus communications and in general features. If you see the blood supply, it is supplied both by the anterior and posterior ethamodal R because it is extending from here to here. Okay, so that is supplied by both anterior and posterior ethamodal artery. You know, these arteries they will enter the nasal cavity through foramens on either side of the cubiform plate of ethamoid. Even the nerves also enter through the foramen. Okay, and the nerve supply is same, the anterior and posterior ethamodal nerve. On the lymphatic drainage, the anterior group will drain into submandibular lymph node and the posterior group will drain into the retropharyngeal nerve. Okay, so I think now you are clear with the ethamodal sinus. Okay, so now so far we have seen the frontal air sinus, sphenoidal and ethamodal. So out of this three, the sphenoidal sinus is the one which is located in the deeper part okay and if you see the, uh, this pictures uh, picture show the openings of the ethamodal sinus you know already where it is opening okay so with this i'll continue okay now next we'll go on to the next sinus which is the largest sinus of um paranasal sinus that is the maxillary sinus okay maxillary sinuses so they are paired sinuses okay it is also otherwise called andrum of hymor why it is called andrum of high move. So the uh, actually this, uh, if you see it is located uh, just um, uh, deeper and higher than the area of the nasal cavity. That's why drainage is a little bit difficult in maxillary acid and gets easily infected. Okay. And you can see in this picture, this is the coronal section of the um, facial bone, you can see the frontal air sinus here, and ethamoral air sinus is the nasal septum, and you can see the inferior concha, middle concha here, okay, and here is the superior concha, and you can see the maxilla bone here, this is the orbit, okay, now the uh, maxillary air sinus, okay, it is uh, located um, within the body of the maxilla, you can see it is located within the body of the maxilla, if you see the measurement, the vertical measurement will be 3.5 centimeter. Okay, and uh, you can take here the average is 3.5 centimeter. Okay, so the frontal sinus is 3, here maxillary is 3.5 centimeters, phenodal is 2. Okay, and uh, you can see the maxillary sinus, the shape of the maxillary sinus is pyramidal in shape, it is pyramidal in shape. And uh, if you see the pyramid, the boundaries of the pyramid, so it has an apex and it has a base. This is the base. Okay, this is the apex, this is the base. So this is a pyramidal shaped um, axillary sinus located within the body of the maxilla. So the apex is formed by the zygomatic process of maxilla and the base is formed by the lateral wall of the Okay, so the base is also otherwise called medial surface of the body of maxilla or nasal surface of the body of maxilla. You can see the maxillary air sinus in the lateral view. This is the coronal section view, okay, or anterior view, okay. And if you see the extent, it extends uh, from the zygomatic bone to the actually uh, maxilla body of the maxilla. This is the extension, okay. And if you see the other boundaries, the, the roof of the maxillary air sinus is formed by the floor of the orbit and the floor is formed by the alveolar process of maxilla. In this picture, you can clearly see 
So the roof is formed by floor of the orbit and the floor is formed by the alveolar process of the maxilla. Okay. And if you see the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus, it is formed by anterior surface of the body of maxilla. And the posterior wall is formed by the infratemporal surface of maxilla. So you will get a little confusion on seeing this picture. Actually, this is a coronal section picture. So here this is apex and the base. This is the roof and the floor. Anterior wall is removed here. Okay. And this picture is later view. Okay, you can see the anterior and posterior wall here. Okay. And if you see the floor of the orbitus, um, uh, actually it has uh, infraorbital nerve uh, plexus here. And the posterior wall is separated from pterygoparatine fossa and the infratemporal fossa. And the posterior wall of the maxillary a sinus here, it is pierced by the posterior superior alveolar now. And the anterior wall uh, actually has a sinus here that is called canalis sinuosus. Through this anterior superior alveolar now will enter. Okay. And, and the floor will be related to the dental plexus, which is formed by the anterior superior alveolar now, middle superior alveolar now, and the posterior superior alveolar now. So this is the relation and boundaries of the maxillary air sinus. If you see the opening of the maxillary air sinus, so the maxillary sinus ostium is present in the posterior part of the hiatus semilunaris. So it is open in the middle meatus of the nose. Okay, this is the middle concha is removed. You can see the middle meatus. So this is the epimodal bulla and this is the hiatus semilunaris. You can see the maxillary sinus ostium in the posterior part of the hiatus cellulonaris. Okay. And here is the inferior concha or inferior turbinate. Okay. And if you see the blood supply, this is supplied by the pussy at the modern vessels. And the lymphatic drainage, since it is located in the posterior part and it is andrum of high mode, so the lymphatic drainage into retropharyngeal lymph node and the nerve supply from the Okay, and now supply is from the posterior ethmoidal and orbital branch of the pterygoparotine ganglion. Okay, so um, I'll tell. Um, uh, sorry, I made a mistake here. Actually, um, the the spinal sinus only retropharyngeal lymph node. Here, the lymphatic drainage is submandibular lymph node. Okay. And if you see, uh, just I'm giving a brief about the maxilla bone, that one, then only you will understand about the maxilla R sinus. You know, this is the uh, maxilla bone on either side. This is the frontal process. You can see the alveolar process. This is the um, anterior surface. And here is the orbital surface. You can see the frontal process. This surface is the nasal surface. Here is the palatine process. Okay. Now you can see the different process here. So if you see this picture, this is the medial surface of the maxilla bone, which has a large opening that is called maxillary hiatus. So this opening is called maxillary hiatus. Actually, the maxillary hiatus will be reduced in size okay, by the following bones. What are the bones? Okay. So superiorly, the, here the um, concas are removed in this, in the lateral wall of the nose. So the, you can see the maxillary hiatus, but it is closed by some bone. Actually, the size is reduced by some bones. What are the bones reducing the size of the maxillary hiatus? It is a very important MCQ question. Okay, note this point. So the size of the maxillary hiatus is reduced in size by four bones. It is a very important MCQ. So the first bone superiorly by the ancillate process of the ethmoid and anteriorly by the descending process of the lacrimal bone. And if you see the posteriorly by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and inferiorly by the ethmoidal process of inferior nasal concha, which reduces the maxillary hiatus into two to three millimeter in size. Okay. So you can see this in this articulated skull. Okay. So I think now you are clear. You can see the uh, opening is reduced by this bone. You can see the uh, lacrimal bone here and snake process of ethmoid and inferior concha and the perpendicular plate of ethmoid here. Okay. So now if you see the um, blood supply, okay, 
uh, it is uh, i told anterior and posterior the medicine is wrong it is uh, supplied by anterior um, posterior and middle superior alveolar branches of maxillary artery and now supply is same okay anterior superior alveolar now middle superior alveolar now and posterior superior alveolar now, which are branches of the maxillary now you can see the roof of the orbit the intra orbital now runs okay so i think you are clear with the maxillary air sinus which is an important air sinus which will be asked separately as a five mark question okay so with this i'll go on to the radiographic view of the paranasal air sinus okay so usually um, the sinuses are viewed by taking x rays okay so in normal x ray you cannot clearly see all the front, um, air sinuses so for that uh, they usually they use a separate view that is called waters view or occipital mental view okay so actually the patient will be asked to rest in a prone position on the table and they have to extend the neck and they have to keep the chin okay on the x ray plate and the x ray will be passing uh, from behind the head and perpendicular to the radiographic plate here you can see the x ray plate here okay the chin is rested on the x ray plate and the head is extended here you can see the x ray machine is located behind the head okay so this is called orbito meatal plane so this view is called waters view usually in this view the mouth should be kept open why the mouth is kept open means to view the spinal as sinus in the roof of the nasopharynx okay you can see this x ray here so here the mouth is open so this is the x ray paranasal sinus waters view okay so you can see the orbit here on nasal cavity the nasal septum okay and you can see the frontal air sinus maxillary air sinus and you can see the Yeah, the model air sinus here in the roof of the nasopharynx. You can see a um, um, spinal air sinus. Okay, so usually the normal X-ray uh, will be um, dense. You can see the radiolucent shadow of the frontal air sinus. If it is infected, means it will become opaque. you can see the opacity if it is infected okay uh, so in this picture this is normal view you can see the uh, normal view of the frontal air sinus maxillary air sinus and uh, the modal air sinus and the spinal air sinus so you can uh, see even in the lateral view you can see the maxillary air sinus and the spinal air sinus you can see this is the cella tercica you can see the spinal air sinus here okay and if you see the applied aspect uh, i already said the one important applied aspect of the um, paranasal air sinus is the sinusitis okay so what is sinusitis inflammation of the mucosa of the sinus uh, paranasal air sinus is called sinusitis the most common sinusitis is the maxillary sinusitis and the next one will be the frontal okay if the frontal and maxillary is infected then automatically ethmoid will get infected and um, the spinodal also when in rare case uh, spinal sinusitis also occur so all together if all the sinuses are infected then that can sign that condition is called pan sinusitis okay so next applied aspect is the carcinoma then um, transpinal hypophysectomy so actually you can see in this picture so this is the normal uh, sinus uh, you can see the normal mucosa in sinusitis you can see the inflammatory the mucosa undergo hypertrophy it will obstruct the pathway and the normally the mucosa will not be drained so the stagnant mucus contributes to bacterial growth and it will result in infection and swelling okay so this is the important aspect this occurs in usually chronic allergic rhin uh, sin uh, rhinitis will cause sinusitis and uh, deviation of nasal septum will cause sinusitis okay so these are the and even the polyps also will cause sinusitis okay so usually the frontal sinusitis uh, the patient will um, come with a complaint of the headache frontal headache so if you um, palpate in the frontal region the patient will complain of pain 
and sometimes there will be edema of the lip will be there. Usually, um, uh, this complaint start in the early morning. If they get up from the bed, they will start with the headache and uh, the headache will be relieved in the evening. That's why this frontal sinusitis is called office headache. So you will have the headache in the morning and in the evening it will be relieved. Uh, what is the reason for this means um, you, in the night you will lie down in the supine portion. So the mucus will get accumulated in the frontal sinus and it will not drain. So um, when the uh, day goes, it automatically gets drained. So that's why the headache will be relieved in the evening. Okay. And the maxillary sinus, sinusitis, I said it is the infection of the maxillary sinus and it is the most common sinus. This may occur due to secondary infection. Okay. Uh, usually, I, I said the sinus opening is at a higher level than floor. Okay. So here is the floor. But you can see the opening is higher level than the floor. Okay. And that's why it is a most common sinus to get infected. And the mucus will easily will collect in the sinus. Okay. And in this sinus, the pain will be referred to the upper teeth and infraorbital skin. And if you touch the maxillary region, the patient will complain of pain. Okay. And um, you can see in this x-ray, the left side maxillary sinusitis. Here it is radio dense and our, mm, here you can see the normal uh, uh, maxillary sinus and normal frontal sinus. But the left side is opacity uh, is uh, more. So the left side, uh, you can see the involvement of the um, uh, infection in the left side maxillary, maxillary are sinus. Okay. And you can see here the both the frontal and even the maxillary air sinus gets infected here. Okay, so this is the normal. See how dense here. This is opaque. So it is milder infection, not very um, severe. It's milder infection of the frontal and maxillary sinus. Both the sinus you can see. Okay, so what is the treatment for maxillary sinus? So first, always you have to do conservative treatment. So uh, uh, reduce the nasal block, treat with antibiotic and ask them to do the steam inhalation okay, and do the pranayama. If it is not settling, it is uh, more disturbing and it is chronic means you have to do intervent surgically. Okay, So there are three, uh, two procedures um, through this we can intervene the maxillary sign of this. One is called antral puncture or antrostomy. So using trocar and cannula, um, we can insert this below the inferior nasal contour. Through this, we can enter into the maxillary air sinus and the sinus will be drained. That is the infected mucus will be drained here. Okay, this procedure is called antrostomy. So other procedure is called Caldwell look surgical procedure. Okay. So you can see uh, through anterior wall of the, when the anterior wall is formed by the medial um, surface of the, that is the anterior surface of the maxilla. Through this, uh, you have to open the uh, maxillary air sinus, enter the maxillary sinus, and you have to remove the um, infected thing. Okay, and this is a second procedure. Usually, the maxillary air sinus, air sinus it is. Uh, will be um, due to one chronic infection due to uh, DVT nasal septum or uh, polyps or allergic rhinitis or sometimes the infected molar teeth or premolar teeth will result in maxillary sinusitis. Okay. Then another important applied aspect is the carcinoma of the maxillary as sinus. Okay. So actually, um, if it uh, a, if the carcinoma extends into the orbit, then it causes diplopia, and it may cause obstruction of nasolacrimal duct. And uh, if it obstructs the, uh, it, it invades the roof of the orbit, then there will be protrusion of the eyeball, and um, sometimes you will get an epistaxis also in this condition. Okay, and the spinoidal air sinus. Okay. Uh, can be approached through the roof of the nasopharynx. 
so through this the pituitary gland can be approached this condition uh, this procedure is called transpenoidal hypophysectomy is more common in pituitary gland tumor this procedure is done for the pituitary gland tumor you can see that so through um, endoscopy they will enter the roof of the nasopharynx and they will enter the cella toracica and through that they will enter the pituitary gland okay and other common uh, applied aspect is the oroantral fistula so where the maxillary sinus will be exposed to oral cavity through a fistula okay so the cause of the oroantral fistula is when they extract the maxillary molar sometimes they will go deep and they will uh, they will create a um, communication so this results in oroantral fistula so other than this some developmental anomalies also will uh, cause um, obstruction of the maxillary or sinus so one is called clausen syndrome so early fusion of the sutures produces hypoplasia of the maxilla so this causes um, um, aplasia of the maxillary or sinus and in creature colin syndrome there is fastat syndrome so this causes underdeveloped maxillary or sinus and binder syndrome results in hypoplasia of the middle third of face with the smaller maxillary sinus okay so these are the developmental anomalies of the maxillary arch sinus okay so you will feel pain uh, in the um, uh, medial end of the superciliary arch in frontal sinusitis and if you have pain in the maxillary region then it is maxillary sinusitis if you are having pain in the bridge of the nose then it is ethmoidal or sinusitis okay so these are the um, important symptoms you can uh, easily uh, find out the disease okay so with this i'll finish the class if you have any doubt you can uh, clear now